Hello and welcome back to Corner Sports. I'm Albert Asnavour and if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into the video. This week we've got another huge week of football and the game we're going to start off the weekend with is Manchester United versus Tottenham Spurs. Both teams are coming into this with a win and a loss and a loss and a win. Um, Manchester United won midweek whereas Tottenham lost midweek but they, Manchester United had lost on the weekend but Tottenham had won on the weekend. Anyhow, it's a lackluster thing going on here, but with big games like this, in my opinion, always, doesn't matter, Darby or not, form always goes out the window because you've got pride to play for. I mean, you're always playing for pride, but in games like these, where it's second and third seed, and if Spurs win in Old Trafford, they go up to second place, you know, there's all these things on the line. Uh, Manchester United, who are going to be in this game to prove a point after getting fucking just embarrassed by Huddersfield. Spurs come into this game having a relaxed midweek, right? They were playing West Ham, they're up to zero, and then West Ham in the span of 10 minutes score three goals, and then bam, they're out of the Carabao Cup, which by the way, in my opinion, honestly, is a good thing for them, not a bad thing to be out. They can focus, A, on the FA Cup, which by the way, Pochettino was like, I'm not here to win the FA Cup, I'm here to win the real trophies, which good for you, but can you actually win a trophy? Because you're playing well, and the team looks great, but you haven't won shit, you know, you're just playing well, so maybe fix that. This game either ends in a draw or a Manchester United win. There's no way Spurs win this game. I know I said this last week, right, where I was like, Liverpool are going to dominate Spurs, but I mean it when I say this. I have a lot more trust in the defensive record of Manchester United than I did in Liverpool, and Liverpool just rolled over last week. Manchester United will win this game 2-1, stamp it, uh, and I think Fellaini might be back. I think Eric Bailly is back in training. I know Zlatan is training. None of these players will play, but it's still, it's good for the team to know that key players are back in training and I don't know how much influence that'll play, but Manchester United will win. Next game I briefly want to talk about it is because it hits close to home is Liverpool take on Huddersfield and look Liverpool you really need to win this game and I expect you to win this game it with a massive margin 4-0 if not 5-0 if not like a 5-1 or something uh, but Klopp and I, I want to talk to you men to men eye to eye T to T January is around the corner please don't fuck this up whether you need to sign Van Dijk whether you need to go out there and sign De Vrij, whether you need to sign Koulibaly, whoever it is, maybe Laporte, please sign a fucking center back. Please. But first, it starts with winning this game, and I think you will. You just need to just you just need to pick up a win in the league and just sort of be like, hey, look, week by week, step by step, let's get back into the rhythm of things. I believe in you. You never walk alone. Let's get it, Liverpool. Manchester City were pushed to the limit by Wolves midweek, who, by the way, look great in the championship and seem to be a team who is bound to come up for next year. And I would love to see them in the Premier League, especially because I want to see Ruben Neves play in the Premier League. But that's beside the point. Manchester City was pushed to the limit, and there is cause for fatigue, especially because Pep decided to play... I mean, essentially a starting lineup, if you ask me. I mean, yes, he had a couple of youngsters in there. He didn't have Ederson playing, but I mean, he had Jesus playing, he had Aguero playing, KDB played, Bernardo Silva was playing. Uh, a lot of players that are important and vital to this team were pushed to 120 minutes. That's a lot, and you're playing against West Brom, a team that is notorious for shutting teams down. Tony Pulis hasn't had the best start, and especially is not on the best form as of late, but I do believe this is where Manchester City slip up. This will be a 1-1 draw. We're going back to Serie A, my favorite league this year, and that is Milan taking on Juventus in San Siro. Both of these teams coming off of a 4-1 win midweek. I'm gonna stand by saying Montea is not the man for the job. He's not good enough for this team. He's just not. I don't care what anyone tells me. He doesn't have the stature. He doesn't have the respect of Bonucci, who's, by the way, just got awarded one of the best center backs in the world, who hasn't been playing anywhere near what he was last year. Why? Because his manager is a fucking fool. So once that gets sorted out, once you bring in an Ancelotti, then you can see an improvement on this player. But as of right now, this team just doesn't play up to its capabilities. And I think that comes down to the manager because he's just not respected. You know, like, yeah, you had your whatever so-so years, three years at Fiorentina. It just, and you had a decent finish to last season, but you have a poor start to this season so far. You're sitting, what, in seventh or eighth place in the league where everybody else ahead of you 
like Roma, Lazio, Inter, uh, Juve, Napoli is playing well and you're third, fourth, fifth, sixth fiddle to them. So not gonna cut it for me. Juve will win this game 2-1. Stamp it, it's gonna happen. Dybala, who by the way looked unhappy after getting subbed off last week, I believe, will probably come back and look to um, score himself a nice brace. Bayern Munich and RB Leipzig will promise to be a really good game, especially because these two played each other midweek and they pushed the limit, went into the penalties, and RB Leipzig just looked like shit in the penalties. Nabi Keita was like begging to leave in January instead of the summer because he just wants to be at Liverpool. This man's picking up red card after red card. He's like, I don't want to play for this club anymore. And this one is in Munich and I just... It'll be a tight game. It's going to be a really good game, a competitive game. It's just hard for me to say that Bayern Munich will lose points in this one. But this is about the time of the season where Bayern Munich starts going like, all right, we're not losing any more games. This is about the same time where they're like, yeah, the title's ours. Borussia Dortmund, you had your little brief period at the top for about a month and a half or two, but that shit's over. We're going to be on top now, and that's just what Bayern Munich does, and it's sad. And uh, I don't know, Borussia Dortmund, you kind of fucked it up. Oh, score prediction? I guess I'll say, do they keep a clean sheet? I guess I'll say 2-0 Bayern Munich. Athletic Club Bilbao, who is historically one of the toughest places to play in Spain, take on Barcelona. Barca this season has yet to lose a game in the league, and... I don't know how much impact, you know, Valverde is going back to his old home and it's just, it's going to be an emotional game. I know Bilbao is going to play a tough game like they always do. Adoriz, who's been a stellar player for so many years now, will look to get on the score sheet as he always does for this team in important games. And I am really, really, really hoping they're able to draw this game. I don't know if you can tell why, but if it isn't fucking obvious it's right behind me Bilbao please pick up points in this game whether that's a win or whether that's a draw and I am so optimistic I'm gonna say Bilbao wins this one 1-0 yeah I said it come at me in the comments what's up Bilbao wins 1-0 and if I'm, if I'm wrong I gotta think of something to do but I think this game I'm getting spot on it'll be Bilbao 1-0 win and if I'm wrong I'll decide a forfeit for myself let's go to our neighbors down south where top of the league Monterey take on Club America I said that with the shittiest accent ever honestly I should I should not put that in these two teams are separated by four points however Monterey still has a game in hand if Club America wants to keep up with the top of the league you gotta go away and beat the league leaders Monterey has not lost at home this season and I'm not really sure they're gonna I probably think that this will be a 2-2 draw with a lot of flares probably two red cards if not three and it's just a back and forth. Mexican League is such an underrated league, one of the best leagues in the world if you're talking football in general. And if you have time, you need to watch this game. The game is on at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, which means 6 p.m. on Pacific. If you are in Britain, that is uh, 2 a.m. your time. And if you're still up at that time, watch this game because this game will be a really, really good game back and forth, attacking style football. And if you enjoy that type of game, this is a game for you, 2-2 two, two draw. And the last game I wanna talk about is Leicester City versus Everton, a fight of new managers. Koeman finally got sacked and so a new manager was brought in and they lost again against Chelsea midweek. So nothing really changed, realistically speaking. Maybe Koeman should have gotten more time. I don't necessarily believe so. I think it was time for him to go, especially after such a horrible start, not only in results, but the performances were just not up to it. And Leicester City also, what seemed like was a poor start because they were playing really difficult teams early on, but they were putting on really great performances turn into just a shit start where they weren't even performing well against good team. They had to let Shakespeare go and they did. They've got they've brought in a new manager. And so what's going to happen now? Who wins this one? A game in the league for these two managers who stamps it in first. I guess we'll have to see. I think Leicester City does it at home 3-1. I think Leicester City does it at home 3-1 just because it's it's Leicester City. I mean, come on. They're like the sweetest team in England. Like, everybody reveres them now because they're like the little 
David to the Goliath, you know? So, yeah, I'll take Leicester City for the win. I think this Everton team just does not have pace, does not have goal scorers, that midfield is not clicked, that defense is fighting. I mean, yes, they're great. Afraid. Ashley Williams is great. Keane is great. Pickford is a great goalie. You got great wing backs, but nonetheless, just like I thought, I thought this Everton team would be so much better and they weren't what I thought they'd be. And so maybe when Balassi comes back and adds a little bit of pace, they need to bring in... See, I want to see them bring in a, a Zaha in January because they need pace out wide. So if they can sign a Zaha in January, they can have a better second half of the season. But until then, I just think they're a mediocre team. Once again, thank you so much for coming back to Corner Sports. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button because you know what? I put out content twice, three, four, five times a week. I'm trying to put out more content and the more you subscribe, the more I'm motivated to put on content. I really appreciate y'all hitting that thumbs up button, leaving me a comment below what you think about the games, who is your team playing. Let's start a discussion and I'll see you next time.